So I'd say the long-term follow-up of the ruxolitinib trials, the Comfort 1 and Comfort 2, you know, really should be very reassuring for patients and for prescribing physicians. You know, showing now with three years of follow-up that I presented at this year's meeting, one, that improvements in splenomegaly are pretty durable. And we see in this group of patients who were fairly sick when they went on the study, I mean, intermediate to and high risk, that 50% of patients remain actively on the drug. You know, so for given the, the people who are on, that, that's pretty good. Two, we see that the improvements in splenomegaly are pretty stable, whether we look at them as splen volume or by uh, physical exam. We see that the improvements in quality of life remain stable in terms of long-term follow-up with the questionnaires. And we see that in terms of survival, you know, there continues to be clear benefit. You know, now we're really comparing two groups in, uh, in a survival analysis, those patients who were on ruxolinib versus those patients who just got on ruxolinib in a delayed way who were originally on placebo. So we do see that over time that those are starting to behave more similarly, but they clearly seem to be doing better than we would have expected otherwise. Finally, I'd say that the long-term safety is, is encouraging. You know, one, we clearly uh, do not get any sense of any long-term increased risks. Indeed, most grade three or grade four, whether they be heme toxicities or non-hematologic toxicities, really become vanishingly rare uh, for new onset after two to three years of therapy. Two concerns that have been raised with other JAK inhibitors like Wernicke's encephalopathy or other long-term concerns, unfortunately, we haven't seen. So I'd say that it's, you know, it's, it's safe. I'd say that we see the effectiveness. Clearly, a, a focus as investigators in, in the new meeting is, you know, how do we even build on these successes further in the future for patients? But uh, I'd be very reassured by the three-year data. Well, I think for the time being, I think as we look at other major phase three clinical trials, whether they be the CML studies, studies like the IRIS studies, studies like an SND. Clearly the trend is to look at them annually for an extended period of time, long enough that you're still gathering information. You know, it's a fairly sick group of patients who were treated initially, so over time there may be some point where that data becomes more fixed, but I think clearly for the uh, foreseeable future. I, I would definitely say so. I'd say at this point in time, it's clearly the standard of care. Patients, intermediate, high-risk MF, big spleen, lots of symptoms, they clearly uh, should be considering use of ruxolinib. I see the areas that are experimental that where it isn't standard of care yet would be early patients, very early or low-risk disease, individuals who have very aggressive disease and should go to a bone marrow transplant instead. Those are different issues, but I think for the people who are included in the study, it's uh, truly the standard of care.